George begins to make the medicine. George took an enormous stewing pot out of the cupboard and placed it on the kitchen table. George! came the shrill voice from the next room. What are you doing? Nothing, Grandma, he called out. You needn't think I can't hear you just because you closed the door. You're rattling the pots and pans. I'm just tidying the kitchen, Grandma. Then there was silence. George had absolutely no doubt whatsoever about how he was going to make his famous medicine. He wasn't going to fool about wondering whether to put in a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Quite simply, he was going to put in everything he could find. There would be no messing about, no hesitating, no wondering whether a particular thing would knock the old girl sideways or not. The rule would be this. Whatever he saw, if it was runny or powdery or gooey, in it went. Nobody had ever made a medicine like that before. If it didn't actually cure Grandma, then it would anyway cause some exciting results. It would be worth watching. George decided to work his way around the various rooms, one at a time, and see what they had to offer. He would go to the bathroom. There are always lots of funny things in the bathroom. So upstairs he went, carrying the enormous two-handled pot before him. In the bathroom, he gazed longingly at the famous and dreaded medicine cupboard. But he didn't go near it. It was the only thing in the entire house he was forbidden to touch. He had made solemn promises to his parents about this, and he wasn't going to break them. There were things in there, they had told him, that could actually kill a person, and although he was out to give Grandma a pretty fiery mouthful, he didn't really want a dead body on his hands. George put the stew pot on the floor and went to work. Number one was a bottle labeled Golden Gloss Hair Shampoo. He emptied it into the pot. I ought to wash her tummy nice and clean, he said. He took a full tube of toothpaste and squeezed out the whole lot of it in one long worm. Maybe that will brighten up those horrid brown teeth of hers, he said. There was an aerosol can of super foam shaving soap belonging to his father. George loved playing with aerosols. He pressed the button and kept his finger on it until there was nothing left. A wonderful mountain of white foam built up in the giant pot. With his fingers, he scooped out the contents of a jar of vitamin-enriched face cream. In went a small bottle of scarlet nail polish. When toothpaste doesn't clean your teeth, George said, then this will paint them as red as roses. He found another jar of creamy stuff labeled hair, hair removal, smeared on your legs, it said, and allowed to remain for five minutes. George tipped it all into the pot. There was a bottle with yellow stuff inside it called Dishworth's Famous Dandruff Cure. And it went. There was something called Brilladent for Cleaning False Teeth. It was a white powder. In that went too. He found another aerosol can. Nevermore Ponging Deodorant Spray. Guaranteed. It said to keep away unpleasant body smells for a whole day. She could use plenty of that, George said as he sprayed the entire canful into the stewing pot. Liquid paraffin, the next one was called. It was a big bottle. He hadn't the faintest idea what it did to you, but he poured it in anyway. That, he thought, looking around him, was about all from the bathroom. On his mother's dressing table in the bedroom, George found yet another lovely aerosol can. It was called Helga's Hair Set. Hold 12 inches away from the hair and spray lightly. He squirted the whole lot into the pot. He did enjoy squirting those aerosols. There was a bottle of perfume called Flowers of Turnips. It smelled of old cheese, and it went. And in two went a large round box of powder that was called Pink Plaster. There was a powder puff on top, and he threw that in as well for luck. He found a couple of lip lipsticks. He pulled the greasy red things out of their little cases and added them to the mixture. The bedroom had nothing more to offer, so George carried the enormous pot downstairs again and trotted into the laundry room, 
where the shelves were full of all kinds of household items. The first one he took down was a large box of super white for automatic washing machine dirt. It said, will disappear like magic. George didn't know whether Grandma was automatic or not, but she was certainly a dirty old woman. So she'd better have it all, he said, tipping in the whole box full. Then there was a big can of Waxwell floor polish. It removes filth and foul messes from your floor and leaves everything shiny bright, it said. George scooped the orange-colored waxy stuff out of the can and plunked it into the pot. There was a round cardboard carton labeled flea powder for dogs. Keep away from the dog's food, it said, because this powder, if eaten, will make the dog explode. Good, said George, pouring it all into the stewing pot. He found a box of canary seed on the shelf. Perhaps it'll make the old bird sing, he said, and in it went. Next, George explored the box with shoe cleaning materials, brushes and cans and polishing cloths. Well, now, he thought, Grandma's medicine is brown, so my medicine must also be brown, or she'll smell a rat. The way to color it, he decided, would be with brown shoe polish. The large can he chose was labeled dark tan, splendid. He scooped it all with an old spoon and plopped it into the pot. He would stir it up later. On his way back to the kitchen, George saw a bottle of gin standing on the sideboard. Grandma was very fond of gin. She was allowed to have a small nip of it every evening. Now he would give her a treat. He would pour in the whole bottle. He did. Back in the kitchen, George put the huge stewing pot on the table and went over to the cupboard that served as a ladder. The shelves were bulging with bottles and jars of every sort. He chose the following and emptied them one by one into the pot. A tin of curry powder a tin of mustard powder, a bottle of extra hot chili sauce, a tin of black peppercorns, a bottle of horseradish sauce. There, he said aloud, that should do it. George, came the screechy voice from the next room. Who are you talking to in there? What are you up to? Nothing, Grandma, absolutely nothing, he called back. Is it time for my medicine yet? No, Grandma, not for about half an hour. Well, just see you don't forget it. I won't, Grandma, George answered. I promise I won't.